for keeping it real or possibly listening to. Uh, we interview here uh, the top performing real estate agents all over the country. Uh, this show is being streamed live on YouTube and Facebook. So if you're currently watching us, uh, go down to the comments. And if you hear something you got a question about, leave it in the comments and we'll try and address that at the end. Um, otherwise, uh, you're probably watching this on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, keepingitreal.com. Uh, many places to uh, subscribe to the podcast. Um, we've been doing this for years and had some excellent guests who have dropped some serious knowledge bombs. Even in the last three episodes, all of them have been great. We had Sasha Chapman talking about growing teams, Bob McCraney talking about guerrilla marketing and real estate. Both of those are awesome. After this episode, go watch those. Uh, and then the last episode with uh, Chuck from the Real Geeks product team talking about all the new stuff that we're rolling out was uh, also amazing. I'm Chris Whitling, the VP of Marketing here at Real Geeks. And today we are going to talk about the daily schedule for real estate success. We're going to be talking to Abe here in a second about how to structure your day for maximum return on your time and making sure that you are running your schedule, not that your schedule is running you. So with me is Abe, who, uh, if you are a Real Geeks customer, you recognize from the Greg and Abe trainings. So Abe, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Hey, Chris. How are you doing today? Great. <laughs> All right. So uh, my name is Abe Safa. Uh, I'm actually a, a licensed real estate agent. I work full-time as an agent uh, and a real estate coach. Um, I'm out of the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina market. Uh, this is my seventh uh, year in real estate, uh, but I've been in sales my whole life, uh, but I'm full-time real estate seven years now. And um, as far as transaction numbers, I think uh, 172 transactions last year on pace to hopefully break 200 this year. It's still kind of early, but trending towards <laughs> 200. Um, so we do a good bit of business, uh, heavy into, into, into the generating side of the business. Um, love real geeks. Uh, and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> hey, I, I think that covered it. Um... I definitely enjoy watching the trainings that you and Greg put on. And so we're excited to talk about this topic because you guys did a show about this about a year ago uh, at this yeah. point. And so I'm really interested to get like, you know, version two of all of your thoughts on this. And so, I mean, why don't, why don't we just jump right in? Um, how, how do you want to approach this? Do you start at the top of the day and work down? Um, you know, tell us how you structure your day. Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, so so let's talk about routine a little bit, right? So, I mean, some some people are, are anti, you know, having a routine. They don't want too much structure, right? Because that's kind of the idea of of leaving a job and going into real estate, right? You want your freedom, mm -hmm. right? So that's why a lot of agents uh, or people leave other industries and come into real estate because they think they can have flexibility and do whatever they want. The, the challenge with that is a couple of things. Number one is if you don't have some sort of structure some sort of routine that you go through on a regular basis then you don't have a business you're 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 a slave to your calendar at that point that's being dictated by someone else you're you're pretty much responding to calls coming in you're responding to fires to have to put out and it becomes to in my opinion you know more stressful and more difficult than actually being in a job you know, so I, I'm a big, I think this is one of the most important things. Number one, mindset is the most important thing in this industry. Yep. And then number two would be daily routine. Um, and whether people like to admit it or not, we all have routines. Okay. As human beings, we are to human, human nature to have a routine. You know, some of us, we wake up and we won't have coffee until we brush our teeth. Uh, we have to shower first and then do this. And then, so we all have some sort of routine, whether it's conscious or, or unconscious that we go through. It's just, it's a lot more powerful when it's actually deliberate and intentional uh, as opposed to just kind of going, going with the flow. So I, I, I do want to talk about that. Uh, yeah. To start. Excellent. All right. So um, maybe, maybe to start with, you know, you talked about making it like very intentional uh, you know, in your office, you know, with your agents, do you talk about like their highest level goals to start setting up this routine? How do you, how do you start putting the puzzle pieces together here? Yeah. So, so, so in, in my opinion, in my world, your, your daily routine is going to consist of more than just work. Okay. Yes. So what, what I, what I like to do and, and, and you know, studies show it, uh, our, our willpower, our stamina, our energy wears down as a day goes on. Right. So as we get later into the day, we have less energy, even less willpower to do stuff. 
you know, so you, I'm sure you read the book, you know, eat the frog, you know, so whatever, <laughs> what some people say, whatever your hardest thing you want to do that day, get it done first. Yep. Okay? I'm not necessarily saying that what I'm saying, whatever is most important to you, you should do that first, not necessarily what's hardest. So I'm a big believer in prioritizing everything that's in your life. Okay. Fitness, diet, uh, family, uh, for me, travel, you know, travel is a high priority on, on my list of things to do. Um, and then of course you're, you're I want to come back goal. to that because that one absolutely fascinates me. And I know a lot of agents struggle with that. So sorry to derail yeah, you no, there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Even taking time off. Like, mm -hmm. like to me, I schedule, I prioritize um, taking time off and traveling. It's high up on my list. I think it's like number three or four on, on my priorities of things to do. So I think it first starts off with you being very clear on what it is that you want. Okay, what do you want from your life? What's important to you? And I would prioritize that. And then make sure that when you when you make out your schedule, Okay, and you make out your routine, it's actually structured in that way in, in order of, of, of highest priority to lowest priority. Because what ends up happening is, you know, come three o'clock, four o'clock in a day, and you know what? You don't feel like doing what's on that calendar at that point. It's not gonna, it's not that big of a deal because it's not one of your high priorities, you know. So I think Excellent. I think it has to it has to start there when you're talking about a daily routine routine, when you're talking about setting a calendar for yourself. Awesome. So why don't we start in the morning? Uh yeah. What are you doing in the morning? What what time are you getting up? Like, what are you doing like in those first moments? Yeah, so 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 to me, the most important thing is getting the body going, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, Tony Robbins says your emotion determines your emotion, right? Your psychology dictates your physiology. So to me, I'm up at four thirty every single morning, um, even on the weekends. As much as I don't like it on weekends, I like to keep that same routine so that there's not a whole lot of craziness in, in my sleep pattern, right? So I'm up at four thirty. And the first thing I want to do is get some sort of fitness in. For me, it's running. I, I'm a runner. I love running. So I go out and get my run done. Um, but at the same time, I also like to be efficient, right? So mm -hmm. as I'm running, usually it's an, anywhere from an hour um, to, to two hours, sometimes on a weekday. On a weekend, it could be two hours. It could be as much as a five-hour run on a Saturday, right? So that's a lot You're of time. A machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, not just yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But besides that, it's a lot of time. So it really consumes, yeah. consumes a lot of your time. So I've got to be efficient with that. So what I've done and what I continue to do is during those hours, I'm also listening to podcasts. I'm listening to audiobooks. So I'm, I'm killing two birds with one stone. So this way, you know, when I'm spending 15 to 20 hours a week running, I'm also educating myself for 15 to 20 hours. So that not only am I benefiting physically, I'm also growing mentally, emotionally, and, and also, you know, learning more and more about the business, about the market, about the economy. Those are things I'm constantly listening to this. I can have my pulse on what's happening. I so totally second there. all of that. Like I do the same thing. If I'm in the gym, I'm listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, mm -hmm. same thing, you know, driving, trying to, you know, just capture as much knowledge as I can, uh, you know, while doing otherwise mundane things. So, yeah. yeah. So, so that's the first thing on my list. Cause to me, that's the most important thing. Cause if you don't have your health, if you don't have your mind, if you don't have your emotions in control, then nothing else in your life is going to work. I don't care who it is. I don't care what you do. Nothing else will work in your life. If you can't get those, you're not going to have the energy to make it through a day. Okay, if if you're sluggish and you're tired and you don't feel good or you're unhealthy, so to me that's the number one priority. Okay, second thing. Now by the time I get home, shower, get dressed, drive to the office. It's usually about seven thirty in the morning. I like to get to the office about seven thirty in the morning, uh, and there I'm getting my head right, getting ready for my three hours of, of generating. Okay, I like to generate three hours a day every single day when I'm working Monday through Friday. I don't work weekends. I don't work nights. Uh, Monday through Friday. So to me, that's that's a second priority is I don't have a business if I don't generate leads. So I can't I can't just sit around and wait for people to call me and for leads to call me. As much as I love those when they come in and, and they're, they're increasing every single year, I want to generate my own business. So to me, that's a that's a second priority. Um, come between seven thirty and eight, I'm getting my head right, looking over. Uh, you know, I'll I'll open up uh, Real Geeks at that point and see any activity that's been going on who's been looking at market reports, who's going to be on my list of people to call today. Right? And then eight o'clock on the dot, no questions, like instantly I'm on the phone dialing at eight o'clock. And that that's how my day starts. Uh, and then from eight to 11, all I'm doing is trying to talk to as many people as possible within that period of time, um, because that is what's going to secure 
everything else that is going to follow in my life, the travel, the, 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 the home I want or cause I'm not big into, you know, cars and jewelry and all that stuff. But to me, my home is important to me and being able to travel and take care of my family is important. So, but without, without a steady stream of income, without a steady, steady stream of, a stream of leads coming in, I can't have any of that stuff. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So eight to 11, just mm -hmm. building that pipeline, building that momentum, uh, let's say you see an email that comes in that's, you know, related to some transaction, uh, you know, or is some like, you know, office thing, like, what, what do you do? Ignore? Between eight to 11? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the key word is C. I don't see it. Right. Oh, so I'm it. not, I don't have my email open. Yeah. So I, I, again, so that eight to 11, the agents that I know, that really produce at a high level around the entire country. I don't care what market you're in. They're, they're super structured and super strict when it comes to this. So they, they minimize every single distraction that they can. So that means, that means this thing right here is not a phone. It's actually, it's, it's a distraction. So this gets turned off. It gets put away or left in the car, whatever you want to do. Uh, email is turned off. Nothing is open. Anything else, you know, whether you use a communication tool like uh, Slack or whatever, all that stuff gets turned off. All you're doing is focusing for three hours a day or two hours or whatever it is that you choose to do based on how much production you want, but really give it 100%. So I'm not seeing an email come in. Not 11 on one, I'll open up my email, I'll check my phone and see, okay, what now, what do I need to address that needs to be addressed at 11 on one? And I, and I guarantee you, all these things that we feel like are so important, nothing happens between eight to 1101 that can't be handled at 1101 it's rare we we just yep. we kind of we kind of we we look for distractions as human beings yeah definitely okay so after 11 you're starting to look at your email uh are you are you using any system to prioritize are you a you know getting things done guy or is it you know sort of chronological how do you how do you prioritize your work after that um, yeah, so I mean, the, the first thing I'll do is I'll check in with my assistant and say, okay, what did I miss? What do I need to do? Um, so I'm, that's the first thing I do. Second thing, I'll check my phone, any messages, text messages, calls from clients. I'll check my email, anything needs to be addressed. So I'll do that. That usually takes about 30 minutes or so. Um, well, so hang know, on, I, let's I, rewind a little bit because you also yeah. said something there that that's pretty critical. Um, you know, so there was a couple hacks that you had for like really driving focus during that eight to 11 time, mm -hmm. you know, putting your phone on do not disturb or just leaving it in the car. Like you know, I, I love that. I think that's absolutely critical. I use the focus button on, uh, you know, Mac OS, uh, to, to do that. Um, but the other thing you were talking about an assistant and so presumably she's shielding you or he or she's shielding you from some of those incoming requests while you're doing the work that's going to drive the business. What 100%. Yeah. So yeah, my, my clients aren't being ignored. Uh, other agents calling about listings and things like that. They're not being ignored. They're just not being talked to by me between eight to 11. So yes, my assistant handles everything during that time that needs to be handled. The things that need my attention, then we'll we'll deal with it at eleven on one. All right. So from eleven on, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about prioritization. Uh, you know, what's happening after that? Yeah. So that that's where for me it gets a little bit very well, a, a lot flexible. It gets very flexible after eleven on one because it really depends on a day. Um, you know, I'm I'm doing more and more coaching nowadays. So I've got a couple of hours blocked out a couple of days a week where I'm doing some coaching calls and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, uh, after 11 or one, it really depends on what happened between eight to 11. So if I set an appointment for that afternoon, then it goes in my calendar, usually at the one o'clock spot or, or maybe a two or three o'clock spot. So I've got, I've got blocks of time kind of left open for any appointments that I set. So if I've got an appointment, I'll go on an appointment during those times. If I don't, then, you know, I'll go back to my to-do list and say, okay, what do I need to get caught up on? I'll do some of those things. Or I'll sit there and maybe um, do some business planning, preparing for other coaching calls, things like that. It becomes really flexible at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, but but going back to like your routine and the importance of that 8 to 11 or really 4.30 in the morning to 11, the importance of that, if I get those two things done, right, it doesn't matter what I do at 11 one after everything else will fall into place. I yeah. mean, there are days where, you know what, I've got no appointments, there's no fires to put out. I just call it a day at 11.01 or 11.30. That's okay. Typically it's Fridays. Fridays I like to cut off early, right? So yeah. that's okay. 
Okay, but what's not okay is I'm not going to sleep in tomorrow morning because I wake up and don't feel like making phone calls. Okay, there's one of my favorite quotes of all time, and I can't remember who said this. No matter how you feel, get up, dress up, show up, and never give up. Right. Yeah. To me, that that's like that's that's my motto. So no matter what, because I promise you, I don't care who you are, how good you produce, there's going to be many, many days where you don't feel like getting up and running at 430 in the morning. You don't feel like making three hours of phone calls. Okay, I'm not one of those freaks that actually enjoys, you know, making calls for three hours. I, that's I'm, I'm usually <laughs> I'm usually very reserved and, and a shy guy. So for me, making outbound calls is something I had to get used to. But I, but I learned early on in my career that that is the lifeline of my business. It's the lifeline of my income, which in turn is the lifeline for everything else that I do want, that I want to do in my life for enjoyment and pleasure. So, so I, it's, I've it's definitely heard from, I got to get it. Yeah. I got to get it done. Yeah. You know, I, I've heard from a lot of professionals in a lot of different industries, you know, that uh, there are things that you do, uh, you know, that are uncomfortable at first, but you know, once you incorporate those just sort of into your, in your core operating system, you know, it's like, they're the foundation for success. And so I think hearing you talk about this, one of my questions that, you know, might be in a new agent's mind is like, mm -hmm. how long did it take you to, you know, or like, was it natural? First question, was it natural for you to wake up at four in the morning and go for a run? And second question, how long until this routine from like 4am, 4.30am to 11am became just like built in and irreplaceable. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's a good question. Let me start off by saying that you don't have to get up before 30 in the morning. That's just what I choose to do. Right. You don't have to make calls from eight to 11 every single day. That's what I choose to do. You can get up at six and go to for a walk for 30 minutes. Okay. And then get to the office and make one hour calls. Right. All of that is determined by what your priorities are and how much business you want to do. Okay, if you don't care about doing 150 deals or 200 deals, then you don't need to do all that stuff, right? For me, that's what my goals are. That, that's what correlates with my financial goals. That's what correlates with my life goals. So that's what I choose to do. So it doesn't matter what you choose, as long as you choose it and you commit to it, and then you're disciplined every single day and, and you just get it done and consistent in doing it. Um, so having said that, it took me, I've always been an early riser, but never a 430 riser till I'd say about, I don't know, four years ago mm -hmm. when I, when I started getting into running a good bit, I started doing long distance running. Uh, I just, I played basketball as a kid growing up. So I was always into, yep. I never liked running. Like to me, it was the most boring thing in the world. I like, to me, it was all about sprints, you know, basketball, you stop and go, stop and go. So that was my, my style. Yep. So about four years ago, um, I started getting into running and really started enjoying long distance running. And, and now it's, you know, it's, I can't not get up at four 30 because in order to be at the office by 7.30 and get a two hour run in, it's just, I mean, do the math, I've got to get up at 4.30. So now it's Excellent, become yeah. just, just instilled in me. It's my habit that I just get up at 4.30, go do my thing, end up in the office. As far as making calls eight to 11, I've been doing that since day one when I started real estate. Okay. To, to me, that's what I was taught. That's what I was trained to do. I hated it. I was miserable making up on calls. I was probably the worst person ever on the phone. I'm willing to challenge anybody. If I had recorded tapes of me back then, I'd challenge anybody, put it up against my tape, and I bet you I was the worst person ever making outbound calls. Um, but look, it's like everything else in life. We're not born good at everything, right? We, we start yeah. off being, you know, whether it's riding a bike or bowling or basketball, whatever, we start off not being very good. And through repetition, we get better, we get more comfortable, your confidence builds up, and then you get even better, and that's just how life is, right? So it took me it probably took me about four to five months to get out of the misery zone, right? Because I was miserable, miserable the first four or five months of making outbound calls. By about month five or six, I started getting comfortable where it wasn't miserable anymore. And now I was starting to see results. It was measurable. I can see like, okay, for every X number of people I talked to, I would get this many listings. So I had it broken down. And I think my first year, I broke it down because I had to deal with the rejection. I had to deal with the people saying no, because you're going to get that most of the time. People are not interested in selling. So in order to do that, in order to deal with people saying no, I kept track of every single contact that I made. I made 12,000 contacts my first year, talked to 12,000 people. So I had it broken down um, what my income was my first year, 
divided by the number of contacts. And I forgot what my number was. I'm just going to make up a number now. Maybe it was $16. Yep. Every single person I spoke to, I made $16. So when I started seeing that and it was measurable and it was scalable, it's like, okay, wow, this is, this is something that can really can do well for me. If I, if I just, just bite the bullet, suffer for those three hours a day is all I need to do. Um, and that's what started happening. And at that point, it just, it got easier and easier. Now I could pick up the phone. I could talk to anybody about anything, no problem whatsoever. Do I enjoy it? No. I mean, I, that's not like I'm waking up at four o'clock in the morning saying, man, I can't wait to get on the phone. Okay. <laughs> but I know the power of getting on the phone. If I can just do, if I can just do those three hours of being on a phone, everything else I want in my life, I can have. And that's what I've associated the phone with. I can have anything I want. If I can dedicate three hours a day to the phone calls. I love your honesty on that. You know, I, uh, yeah, I knew a guy a long time ago that used to say like, I got to turn on the super you, you know, <laughs> you'd be at trade shows or whatever. And he's like, okay, I'm normally an introvert, but I got to like, turn it on so I can, you know, <laughs> get in front of these people and get the attention. That, that, you know, so, that's exactly what it is. I've got to yep. get in a zone because my, my, my natural personality is not the one to pick up the phone and talk to people. It's almost like I've got to, like I, I got to get my head right in the morning, right before eight and flip that switch and, um, and be that character. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the second thing that I really love that you said there is like tracking those pipeline metrics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so however you're doing it, whether it's, you know, real geek CRM or, you know, a spreadsheet, it's so critical. And that scales from the smallest of small businesses all the way up to, you know, billion dollar multinational companies. Like we're all doing the same thing. We are all tracking those KPIs at, that turn into revenue. No, no question about it. You can't run a business without looking at the numbers, at least yep. not for long. Okay? So you've got yep. and that's the way I look at it. You know, you've got to look at your numbers. You got to know what you, if you wanted to scale, if I wanted to, let's just say I want to do 400 deals next year. I can, I know yep. exactly what needs to be done. Now, am I willing to pay the price to do it? No, I'm not. Right. But at least I know what's necessary to get there. And I think that's important in running a business. You should know exactly what needs to be done to do any level of business that you want to do. Excellent. Yeah. So coming back to the daily routine, um, you know, so you say that afternoons have uh, much more freedom, openness, you know, to take care of business. Uh, you know, I know when I look at my schedule, I tend to think that my weeks have a little bit of a, at least a, you know, thematic arc to them. So after I'm done with my morning routine, uh, it, it tends to change. Is there structure, you know, maybe if you zoom out and look at your routine from a broader basis in that sense, or is it all sort of like daily equals daily and it doesn't really scale up? The, um, well, the, the structure is like, like, I don't, I don't want to work past four or 5 PM. Mm -hmm. So that's always, that's always in place unless it's something really urgent, you know, for clients in town and they can only meet at six o'clock. Yep. And they're ready to list their home and they're not interviewing other agents Then I'm going to make an exception and go meet them at six o'clock or on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Right. Um, if I set an appointment, I usually like to do it at one o'clock, two thirty, or no later than three thirty to four. So I could be done by five o'clock. So there, there, there's those in place. You know, if I'm doing my coaching calls, of course, those are in the calendar. Um, yep. So. There, there's kind of some sort of structure, but not every day is the same because like, like today, I didn't have any appointments this, today. You know, so I had, I had, I got done at 11. I had two coaching calls and after this, after this, I'm done. I've got one more zoom call at four o'clock, but pretty much my day is empty. Excellent. You know, so I'm, I'm just going to hang out and probably pick up a book and read. Right. So, nice. but tomorrow might be complete tomorrow. I've got an appointment, right? So tomorrow, you know, I'll, I'll get my appointment done. I might be done by three or four tomorrow. So so there is a little bit of structure in the afternoon, but there is extreme, extreme structure in the first part of the day. Right. Up to up to 11 o'clock. There is no there is no shake in that no matter what happens. Definitely. So you talked uh, a little bit. This is sort of just curiosity mm -hmm. on my part um, and maybe particular to your market. But, you know, when you have appointments, are those appointments usually phone, Zoom calls? You know, you mentioned in person. Uh, and then, you know, trying to manage the busy schedules of your clients, like w what form do those usually take? That, that's a good question. So yeah, I'm in, I'm in a resort market. So mm -hmm. in our market, I do a lot of condo sales as well. I'm probably, I'd say 60%, maybe even 70% condos and then 30% to 40% homes. Um, the condos are typically, I'd say 80% of them are over the phone appointments. 
So that's that's a beauty. I love that, right? So because yep. I can be super efficient. I can I can. There's no driving anywhere. I can just get on the phone, talk <laughs> yeah. for five minutes, and it's a done deal. Um, there's another ten to twenty percent of people they actually come into town and want to meet at the unit at the condo. So mm -hmm. I'll go meet those people in person. Single family homes are almost always in person uh, in their home. Um, I think I've only done one Zoom appointment ever. So it wasn't like I, I didn't want to. I just never had to. Right. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I haven't done many Zoom appointments. Don't. We, it was beginning of COVID, but don't really do Zoom appointments. But I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. All right, people watching at Zoom. Here's a new market for you. Uh, <laughs> real estate. <laughs> all right. Um, so we've now brought you brought you all the way up to like four or five p.m. Mm -hmm. What's your evenings look like? Yeah. So it, it, so again, I'll um I might check my email again you know, right before dinner and see, okay, what did I miss? I'll look at my tomorrow schedule. Okay, what do I got going on tomorrow? Do I have any appointments? How how are my listings taken for the month? Do I need to ramp up my calls tomorrow morning? Things I'm, I'm kind of thinking about the next morning. Okay, and then once that's done, I'm shutting it down. My, my phone automatically, you mentioned the focus mode. Mm -hmm. My phone goes on do not disturb at 7 p.m. And it, nice. doesn't, it doesn't come off of that until 4.30 in the morning. Uh, nice. period not yeah nothing happens during that time where i need to address it that can't wait till the morning um and then that's it i'll have my dinner you know hang out with my wife you know we don't have any kids so i don't have to you know uh get the kids ready for school or anything like that so we have dinner hang out for a little bit and i typically go to bed about 9 30 or so nice and that's and that's my routine you know we again Excellent. no no i don't work evenings i don't work weekends um but but i'm super super focused and super disciplined from 8 to 11 which I, and again i i can't stress that enough if if you do that if you just did that by itself everything else will literally fall into place for you everything i i'm glad you nailed that one because i was about to circle back on it you know yeah so you build that momentum and that's why you have the free time that's why you're no, not no question yeah if you yep. could be if you could be disciplined and structured for just those one two or three hours in the morning to generate, then you don't have to be disciplined at all the rest of the day. And look, I'll give you an example. So before real estate, I was um I was in retail my whole life, mm -hmm. right? So with retail, you can't open up a store without something on the shelves to sell, right? right. You can't open up a bakery and not have to go in there early in the morning and bake the bread and the cake so you can sell during the day. Okay, one of my favorite commercials, and, and this is probably going to date me, you'll see how old I am, is um the Dunkin' Donuts guy. You know, he just roll out of bed like at three o'clock in the morning. It's time to make the donuts. That's that's my model. That's the philosophy. You got to yep. make the donuts. If you want to be able to open up a business and make some money and actually do some sales throughout the day, you need the damn donuts, right? So you got to go in there again, one hour, two hours or three hours every morning and make the donuts. Excellent. I, I don't know if it dates you so much as uh, geographically locates you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that, that's <true>. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, excellent. All right. I love it. Um, hey, so before we got started, you know, and actually you mentioned in the intro that, you know, you do all this to, you know, prioritize the things that are important in your life. And, you know, we know from talking to you that you're a big traveler. Right. Um, and I'm curious, like, how does all this work on the road? So again, that's the beauty that eight to 11 allows me to travel. I like to travel at least once a month somewhere. So my wife and I just got back from France. Um, this past week and then wednesday i'm leaving again for europe with my dad so i worked today's what the 26th i think i've worked nine days this month and my team and i have taken 13 listings so far this month so nice. and i'm not i'm not saying that to brag i'm saying that to to prove a point that you don't have to work 18 hour days you don't have to work seven days a week you just have to be super efficient and you got to be a generator you got to be able to generate leads Okay, if you allocate the time to generate leads, you don't have to work as hard, right? So, so when I'm traveling, um, all I need is my laptop and a and a and a earpiece, a Bluetooth earpiece, right? I'll I'll open up if I'm gonna do, like if I'm gone for like eight or nine days, I typically want to at least one or two days spend an hour per day on the phone, you know, getting caught up with some because people call me, they want to list. People call me, look, I'm yep. ready to list. I've been getting your market updates uh, all these years. I'm ready to sell. So I don't want, I can't neglect them for nine days. So I'll jump on the phone for about an hour. I'll open up my real geek, see who's been looking, who's, who's, who's 
asked for a, a property valuation, who's looked at a market report, things like that. And I'll just check in with them, kick off a couple of workflows, especially like the last two days before my vacation is over. I like to ramp up the workflows. So I come back home and I've got all these leads to follow up with. You know, so I do things like that to constantly keep the momentum going because I don't want the momentum to stop just because I'm out of town or I'm traveling. So I want to keep it going, keep my pipeline full. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah. I like, I like also that you're, you know, we'll have to do a separate episode on, uh, you know, the workflows that you're using because you, yeah. you're sort of dropping some, uh, you know, some hints to some, uh, I don't know if they're advanced features, but, you know, definitely you're utilizing them in, in interesting ways to, you know, essentially manage your lifestyle, uh, which is very cool. So um, probably last question. Uh, and then Sean, you can tell us if we got anything in the chats, but you know, there's been a lot of concern out there in the economy about, you know, things the feds doing and, you know, sort of macroeconomic factors. Um, I'm sure you've seen several, you know, cycles in the real estate market, you know, does any of this change, you know, as you see these things, you know, maybe starting off in the distance and then getting closer? Yes, I mean, there's definitely a shift in the market right now. I don't think anybody out there can can argue with me on that. Um, if they do, I challenge you to go back and look at the numbers again. And there's something in there that you can see that the, the market is shifting. Um, the one thing that that I think is important for people to realize out there is all, all a shift is, is a change. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just a change in direction. Okay, for, for the last two or three years, Housing prices have been going like up like this. Inventory has been going the opposite direction down. Okay, at some point that's not healthy. At some point that's got to change and it's beginning to change. So all it is is a change. Okay, so now it's up to you on what you label it and make that mean to you. Okay, you can make it mean like, oh my God, my whole world's going to change. I'm going to go out of business. And what happens if there's less sales? Blah blah blah, and get worried and then freeze and don't take any action. And guess what? You're going to cause yourself to go out of business. I'm looking at this and I'm licking my chops. This is an opportunity yeah. because what's going to happen right now? It's already happening. Inventory is starting to grow. If inventory is growing, what does that mean? There's more people listing their homes. So I'm seeing an opportunity to go out there right now and really capitalize on the listing side of the business and grow my inventory and take more market share is the way I'm seeing it. So as inventory is growing, okay, I don't care what the media is saying. I don't care what the market is doing. I don't even care what the whole economy is doing. There's always going to be buyers and sellers. So my job is to go out there and talk to more sellers or more homeowners and find more sellers out of that group. That's what my job is. Now, because of the dynamics of what's changing, it's probably most likely, not probably, going to require that I talk to more people to get the same number of listings, right? Because there's yep. going to be a lot of people that are scared right now. There's going to be a lot of uncertainty. And what happens when there's uncertainty? People freeze. They want to wait and see, wait and see. Right. So what I'm doing is my, my structure does not change. I'm still up at 430. I'm probably doing more things about mindset right now. I make sure I'm mentally tough enough and, and I have the mental endurance to make it through the day. My eight to 11, I'm still doing religiously, but I want to try to push it a little bit further and make more contacts. I want to make about 25% more contacts during that time if I can, because to me, I'm going to have a little bit of a cushion to offset less sellers hitting the market. So, so my solution to the shift in the market is I'm going to see it as an opportunity and I'm going to talk to more people so I can make sure I do at least the same amount of business, if not more. That's my solution to what's happening. Anything beyond that, I could care less what's going to happen because I can't control it. it well, and putting more on the top of the funnel is never going to hurt you. No right? question about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love those answers. Um, we got a couple questions from uh, yeah. YouTube and Facebook. So uh, one of them was, you know, where do you get the phone numbers to call? I think the question is, what are your lead sources actually, if I'm going to interpret that? So I'll let you uh, comment on that. Yeah, so um, uh, first of all, I've, I've got a pretty big database at this point after doing this for so many years. I think I've got about 8,000 people in my database. So 40, 45% of my business is people right out of my database. Yep. So I'll typically get three or four people a month call me from the database and say, okay, you know, we're ready to sell. Let's talk. Um, I still call expireds. So that's a, about 10% of my business. Um, I don't do FISBOs anymore. Um, and then I'm signed up for every single um, uh, lead, lead source that's out there, whether it's home, like Upness, Fast Expert, uh, uh, Effective Agent, every one of them. Anyone that's available, I've signed referral exchange. I've signed up for 
to try to get some leads from them uh, as a as a referral. Um, and and then past clients and referrals. That's where most of my business is from. I'll still dive in and do a little bit of circle prospecting now and then now and then. Uh, because yep. I think that I think there's some huge opportunities in that area that people aren't really tapping into because everybody's so busy. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. It's still old school, picking up the phone, calling people and having real estate conversations. Awesome. Um, how many I don't know if you mind sharing, but like how many leads are you generating from your uh, from your Real Geeks websites? Or maybe you could even say from a higher level, like, you know, when you open up your Real Geeks in the morning, like how many new leads do you have? Yeah, I mean, I don't know the exact number. Um, I I don't I don't track it that way, um, but my dad, what 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 you consider real geeks, I I call it my database. Yep. Right. So yeah, I mean that's that's where my my database is stored. So when people are calling me from within that, um, it's it's translated to about 40, 45 percent of my business now, uh, in the in in, in this year. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to go rapid fire here. Sure. Uh, do you leave messages? So this is another question from YouTube. Um, you know, and I think the concern is, okay, so if you're calling at 8 a.m., uh, you know, early in the morning, uh, you know, are you concerned about actually getting connected? No, actually, one of the best times to connect with people is between 8 and 9 a.m. and then between 4 and 7 p.m. Actually, the best time, the best times to actually call and get most connections is 4 to 7 p.m. But the reason I'm not prospecting four to seven is because, you know, as we talked about earlier, by the, by the time it gets to four o'clock in the afternoon, I'm not going to have the willpower and discipline to pick up the phone and call. So the I second know, when people call me at that time, I say, send me an email and I'll get to it in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, eight to 11 people yeah. are, are, are I'm calling and, and it's a pretty good pickup rate. Um, do I leave messages? It depends on the lead source. It depends on who I'm calling. If it's someone within my database. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm cold calling, then no, if I'm circle prospect. I'm not leaving messages. For circle prospecting. I love that level of sophistication. Yeah. Um, let me look at the questions here. Uh, so in that three hours, um, about how many connections are you getting through? Like how many dials are you making it between eight and 11? I, I don't track number of dials. I track mm -hmm. how many people I talk to. So I track the number of contacts. contacts. Um, okay. my, my first year, I was talking to 60 people a day. Um, the second year was 30 people a day. The third year was probably 20 people a day. Now I'm probably talking somewhere on average, maybe 13, 14 people a day. But here's the cool part, right? That number of contacts has gone down every single year, but my production has gone up every single year. Yep. yep. Are you curious as to why? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> am. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what's going to happen is if you do this properly, Okay, and you're building a database and everybody you talk to, you get their email address, put them into real gigs, do a safe market report for them. Okay, and you check in with them from time to time, they're going to start calling you over time. So that's less calls I have to make. Secondly, when you first start, like when I first started, I told you I was bad. Like my conversations did not last very long. All right, I was in and off the phone for like, you know, five seconds. Now, when I get someone on the phone, we're having really in depth conversations. Okay. And I'm getting better results right now. So my conversations are getting longer. It's not that I'm spending less time on the phone. Yeah. It's just, I'm making less calls because I'm getting deeper into conversations and my conversion is so much better now than it was in year one. Are those, are those calls getting longer because you're spending more time rapport building, or is it because you are going deeper into discovery? Like, do you have a sense of why those, those calls are getting longer? Yeah, I think part of it is um, the quality of the leads is getting better, right? Because again, a lot of it's coming from my database. So it's people I know, it's people I've been checking in with. So we're having deeper conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and then second of all, the, the depth of, of my conversations is so much better now. My knowledge of the industry, my knowledge of the market is so much deeper now that people actually want to stay on the phone with me and we talk about it. Right. Yeah. As opposed to my first year, like I, uh, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> right. So I get on the phone and we talk you want to sell? No. Okay. Bye. Click. Right. So, but now, yep. now the conversations get deeper. So because of that, I'm building better rapport with people. And even if I don't get them that day, I'm leaving an impression on them that I, I do get them at some point. Like they think, okay, man, this is the agent I want to go with when I am ready. Excellent. Um, I think this is the last question and it's a kind of a variation of uh, one of our questions online, but you know, are you looking at, and given that you're in a resort town, 
Um, are you looking at the, you know, like area code or information on the lead and, you know, making a decision on when to call, you know, between eight and 11 based off the time zone that that person's actually in? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't call anybody before 8 a.m. their time. Uh, number one, it's against the law. And number two, it's just not, not cool. <laughs> you know? It's not very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got a chart on my wall that has all the area codes and what time zone they're in. But, oh, I, nice. but by now, I've memorized just about every single area code. So I know exactly where it is for the most part. If I'm not sure, I'll just peek up on the wall and see what area code it's in. And I'll wait till 8 a.m. their time and then call it. Producer them. Sean, we got to get that up on the blog. <laughs> Um, all right. Hey, you know what? I think that's a great place to call it. Uh, you know, Abe, really want to thank you for, uh, you know, joining us and, uh, you know, sharing the knowledge. Hey, any final thoughts? Also, where can people find you guys? Yeah. So, um, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I'm all over Facebook. Um, that's the best way to actually reach out to me. Also, uh, you can go to our real estate sales solutions, Facebook group. It's a private group that Greg Harrelson and I have. And it's only for real estate agents. So you see a lot of these real estate agent groups that have like 100,000 people in them and they're not agents. We've got almost 3,000 people and every single one is a real estate agent. So we have really good conversations in there. We share a lot of uh, 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 content on there to help people grow. That's probably the best two places to, to hit me up. Excellent. Love it. Um covered final thoughts. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, in terms of keeping it real, uh, you know, you can find us at realgeeks.com slash blog, keeping it uh, anywhere where you can download podcasts, uh, do the whole like subscribe routine. Um, and, uh, hopefully I'll see you here in the future. Special thanks to our producer behind the scenes, Sean, for making all the trains run on time and, uh, all the guests come together and, uh, setting it up for us. All right. Talk to everyone later. All right. Thanks, Chris.